Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Chris and I'm an artist if you're new here and I am back with another art video. I have an oil painting to share with you guys today which is exciting because I haven't done an oil painting in quite some time. I'll be sharing with you some of the process as well as some of the thoughts that I had while painting this piece. So it had been a while since I have done an oil painting and it also had been a while since I've done a personal piece for myself that wasn't for the purpose of being turned into a product. And whenever I take these long breaks in between paintings, I get really nervous about the whole process. I feel like I suddenly forgot how to draw, forgot how to paint. And I feel like this every time I finish a painting, I feel lost and I feel like I'm having to start from square one all over again. I knew I wanted to paint something, but I had no idea what. So I turned to my sketchbook and I, I sat down to try and sketch out some ideas. And usually when I do that, I end up wasting a lot of time just staring at the blank page. I'm just grasping at anything that comes to mind and putting it down on paper, hoping it'll lead to something that will end up inspiring me. But oftentimes when I sit down to sketch and I have no clue what to draw and nothing in my head that I, that I see that I want to get down, it usually doesn't go well and I end up just wasting a lot of time staring and not getting much out onto paper. So I decided to be hard on myself and I told myself I have to pick one of the ideas that I had scribbled down and I just have to commit now and go with it and see what happens. So one of the ideas that popped into my head, it wasn't very clear, but I had a vague, vague idea of how it would look like and how I wanted it to look like. And it was basically this clown that was taking up a lot of the composition um it was taking up a lot of the frame and it was sitting and um i wanted the figure's eye just one of their eye to pop out from behind their legs it sounds weirdly specific but that is what i just saw in my head as i was staring down onto the blank paper so I decided to run with this idea and turn it into a painting. And beyond the idea of the pose being um, very crammed in the composition, I didn't really know how I was going to execute it. I really wanted the background to be this yellow mustard color. For some reason, I'm really into that color right now. So that is one thing that I could see clearly in my head as being a part of the painting and I wanted the style to be very graphic because I am really into that kind of style at the moment and I really wanted to challenge myself to try something a little different and not feel like I have to render everything out for it to look finished or appealing. I feel like I'm really going through a an experimental phase with my style right now and I am experimenting different uh, ways of approaching my paintings. So I didn't have a clear understanding of how I was going to approach the painting or how it was going to look like in the end but I, I knew that I wanted to stray away from my usual render everything out technique and I wanted to make the background the yellow mustardy color that I am kind of fixated on lately. I really didn't want to fall into the trap of spending too much time in the planning stage so after having done just two color comps that ended up being very similar to each other I decided you know I'm just gonna run with it I'm gonna trust myself to be able to at least make this into something not revolutionary or anything, but at least worth a look. With oil paintings, I will typically do an underpainting, but I felt like it was a really simple painting. And since the colors are going to be mostly flat patches, I didn't feel that it was necessary. So I started out just mixing the colors that were in my color comp that I decided to go with and just filling out the colors as if I am using a coloring book. I think it saved me a lot of time doing it this way instead of doing an underpainting. I feel like the underpainting would have helped 
um, harmonize all the colors together and also it would give the next layer of paint more depth because it has something to work on underneath but I really wanted to get this painting done in a few days so I decided to skip that and while I was filling in the um, areas of color, I took some dark reddish brown and I outlined the pencil outlines because I wanted outlines to remain in the painting, but I didn't want them to be too stark. I wanted them to be incorporated well into the rest of the painting. So my idea was that as I start to paint the rest of the piece, the outlines will start to integrate with the paint that is adjacent to it. And the nice thing about oils is that when you have two different colors of paints um, next to each other and you start kind of layering it on top of one another, it gives you the mixed color um, in between the two without having to pre-mix that and then apply on top. You know what I mean, right? <laughs> That's the nice thing about oils. So after laying everything down and filling out all the white of the canvas, um, this is where I actually felt stumped because the painting at this point looked almost finished. I knew I was going to keep it a more graphic style, so I didn't really know where I could take it from this point because I wasn't going to do too much other than render the face out more. Also, I felt the painting was a little too cool and a little bright and light in value. So I wanted to knock everything down a little bit. And I was going to do that by glazing, which I had never done before until this point. So I was a little nervous. After a few days, I touched the painting to see whether it was dry or not. And it was mostly dry to the touch other than a few areas. But as long as the areas you're intending to glaze is dry, I think you're okay. So I made a mixture of this warm dark yellow for the glaze because I wanted to trend the rest of the colors more towards a darker yellow. I, I felt like it was a little too cool for me. So I used a I used more of my transparent pigments for this and I also diluted it heavily with some Gamsol and the painting medium I was using which was Neo McGill. And I took a piece of paper towel and I dipped it into the mixture and then I rubbed the paper towel into the painting, into the areas where I wanted to glaze. I feel like this process is very similar to the digital coloring process where on Photoshop you have the multiply layer or the colorize layer on top of another layer and it affects all the colors underneath and it, it makes it either darker or it, it trends the colors into a different direction. So that's kind of what glazing is like. It, it's just a really quick and easy way to affect a lot of the properties of your painting all at once instead of having to mix all new colors. So after glazing, I had to wait a little bit for the layer to dry before adding another layer of paint on top. I really like the rough brush textures of the initial layer, but I also wanted the painting to look finished. And I didn't know how to quite incorporate that rough brush texture with something that looked more finished. I didn't want to just lay down a flat, even um, layer of color. I wanted there to be some sort of visual interest in the even patches of color, um, some kind of textural element, but I don't know if I know how to achieve that and I, I don't think I did in the end. And I feel like the time lapse from here on will be very boring for you guys because not much drastic change happens from this point. At this point, I'm trying to get the thing to a finished look. So I am applying thicker layers of paint over the patchier areas. And I'm also refining the outlines that become a little bit lost throughout the painting process. I try to add a little bit of interest to the brown outlines by introducing other colors adjacent to it. For example, 
when I'm working on her gloves, I brought in some light yellows and light blues to break up the uniformity of the, the brown color. So it looks a little more interesting and less flat while not having to render each finger out to make it more interesting. There's really no rhyme or reason as to what color I will pick as the, the interesting color to break up the brown outline. It really depends on what I'm feeling. Sometimes I will want a complementary color. A lot of the times though, I will go with a color that is just next to it on the color wheel. One of the last things I do is touch up the background with another layer of paint. I mix a big batch of yellow and I make it slightly darker than it was in the initial layer because I wanted it darker. In my head, I can see the background having some interesting textural elements and patches of just random colors of paint, but I just couldn't bring myself to break up the evenness of the the background. I, I was really scared of having something out of place, um, potentially messing up the other areas of paint that I had already laid down and basically finalized and so in the end I don't end up doing something too interesting with the background I just kind of leave it as it is and it does feel like a lost opportunity but I really didn't know how to go about executing it like I I knew I wanted it to look textural and and interesting but I, I didn't know how to even go about painting it for me it's more easy to wrap my head around rendering something so that it looks realistic but stylizing something out of nothing and abstracting it that's more difficult for me so once the last layer of the background was laid in i just had to clean up some of the outlines because they had been painted over and make sure there aren't glaringly patchy areas because at this point anything too patchy will look unfinished and look out of place and that is it that is the painting unfortunately while i was recording this my phone died so i lost a little bit of the footage at the end but trust me you're not missing much because like i've said before this painting looked pretty much finished very early on and so i know it's not the most exciting painting time lapse and a part of me is still beating myself up for it. Um, I feel like I, I just kind of got stuck in my old ways of not being able to go outside the lines, or outside the box, um, feeling like I had to stick to the plan and feeling like I would mess things up if I tried anything beyond that. But I'm gonna choose to move on because I really don't want to get into the habit of beating myself up over these paintings. I knew that I was attempting something I had never done before, and it isn't realistic of me to expect myself to nail it on my first try. I knew going into the piece that I wanted to put pretty strict deadlines on myself. I didn't want it to drag on for days, for weeks. So I think I'm making the right decision to move on and hopefully just do more exercises like this and learn from them and hopefully get closer and closer to this faint vision that I have in my head. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this painting come together and hearing about some of the process behind it. I always appreciate hearing what you guys think and I really appreciate people sticking around and watching what I have to show you guys. While I may go through some periods of inactivity and change, it really means a lot to me. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!